Well, with Tom Brady watching from the Fox booth, they repaid the favor to the Eagles. They were up 21-0 one minute into the second quarter, jumped all over the Eagles, and it was Baker Mayfield that led the way. We have never seen an early season run like this before. It's not just the fact that the Buccaneers are winning, it's how they are winning. Baker Mayfield has been nothing short of dominant, and game by game, his contract is starting to seem like one of the best values in the entire league. Everybody really locked in on the game plan from start to finish. They really understood exactly how they wanted to attack the Eagles, and they executed things perfectly from the jump. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the Buccaneers' success, and I'm going to talk about everything that has been going on with this team, as well as what to expect moving forward. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are on the road to 40k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. So, this game against the Eagles was absolutely wild. A lot of guys stepped up on the offensive line. There were receivers that aren't normally in the game, but yeah, a lot of guys stepped up and locked in on the game plan. And this was a hot one, so it's not always easy to lock in like they did. Let's recap the game. So the Buccaneers started off with the ball and the offense came out firing. Mike Evans had a short catch. Rashad White had a 17 yard gain and a 22 yard gain. And then once they got to the goal line, Baker hit Mike Evans for a two yard touchdown to put the Bucks up on top seven to nothing. The defense then immediately got a stand, putting the ball back in Baker's hands, and he didn't slow down at all. He hit Mike Evans for a 17 yard gain and then hit Trey Palmer for a 15 yard touchdown to put the Bucks on top 14 to nothing. And Raymond James Stadium was rocking, but wait, it didn't stop there. The defense forced yet another punt, and you could sense that Jalen Hurts was getting super frustrated and was losing some composure. On the following drive, Baker again just exposed the Eagles defense, hitting so many different guys, easily marching down the field with a little help from the backfield. But they ended up punting, but Cooper DeGene fumbled, setting them up in scoring position. And Baker ended up taking one in himself to put the Bucks on top 21 to nothing. And from there, the game was pretty much over, and Baker almost threw his fourth TD in the first half, but it was barely dropped. As a Browns fan, I love to see the success that Baker is having, but mentally, it drives me insane because the Browns are just such a snake-bitten organization. Anyways, for the Buccaneers, this was a much faster start. Obviously, the team wanted to get the bad taste from the previous week out of their mouth, but in the post-game interview, Baker Mayfield talked more about how that fast start really set the standard for the game and they need to do that more consistently in the weeks moving forward. Here's more of what Baker had to say in that interview. Obviously the relationship with Mike Evans and believe me, everyone loves throwing to Mike. And when I was here, I was finding him on every play. And I said to KB, if I'm him, I'm throwing him to the first play of the game. And there you go, you fire the hitch out there to him and get him rolling. I know that always gets some juice flowing for him. How did he look to you out there today? He looked great. I mean, as hot as it was today, guys are rotating in and out, but uh, Mike's a stud as you know, so. Yeah, just trying to get him going early is something we didn't do last week that we realized we needed to. Getting into some of the numbers from this game, Mike Evans had 8 receptions for 94 yards with a touchdown. Chris Godwin had 6 receptions for 69 yards, Kate Otten had a big game with 6 receptions for 52 yards, and Shepard had 51 yards as well. So 4 guys with over 50 yards. Quite the overall performance by the unit. And one funny stat out of the backfield is that both Rashad White and Bucky Irving both had 49 yards off 10 carries. To me, it just feels like this team is really starting to get going. And I don't want to look ahead to the future because nothing is guaranteed. And right now the Buccaneers are dominating. But if Baker Mayfield can play at this level on this contract, then the Bucs have the opportunity to do so much with their team because there is going to be money to throw at improving other positions. Because if you look at my Cleveland Browns with Deshaun Watson, he is taking up so much money that the front office actually is going to have to get rid of some of the talent. And that is the exact opposite of what's going to happen in Tampa Bay. But anyways, looking at the rest of this season, if the position players can stay healthy, I do think this roster is talented enough to make a Super Bowl type of push. But they need to keep taking things week by week because a good regular season record could set this team up in a great position to succeed in the playoffs. The Bucks now own sole position of first place in the NFC South. The New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons played each other, and New Orleans had a big opportunity to stay at the top of the South even in a tie as they'd be 3-1 and one and have two division wins. That wasn't meant to be though, as they dropped the game after Falcons kicker Youngway Koo hit a 58-yard field goal as time expired. 
Atlanta's 26 to 24 win at home put them at second with a win over the Saints head to head and Tampa Bay will play them in a short week on Thursday. Moving on, going back to the Eagles game, one big takeaway I think we all got from this game is that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can in fact run the football. It didn't take a huge 30 plus yard gain to get those averages up. It didn't take a miracle. It just took patience and picking the right spots. Bucky Irving had his first career touchdown. Rashad White had two receptions. I know Baker Mayfield should get a lot of credit for opening up the run game, but I think it was relieving to see Tampa Bay finally show the ability to rush. They looked far more competent than than in the previous weeks and we need to keep seeing them get both backs involved as for the defense the buccaneers got a notable performance out of their captain levante david he was all over the field making plays at every level and ensuring no eagles players would get behind him on top of that he caused havoc in the backfield by recording two sacks on Jalen Hurts. David's stats for the game across the board highlight how dominant the team was on defense. He led the team with eight tackles and added two tackles for a loss, a pass defended, and a strip sack on Hurts. As if the game wasn't already completely dominated by David, he reached a nice career milestone with the 1,500th tackle of his career. The Buccaneers had a total turnaround from a disastrous defensive effort a week ago. The team recorded six sacks on the day after being dead last in the NFL in that category. The early lead helped, but when the offense slowed down, it was the suffocating Bucks defense that didn't allow Philadelphia to gain any momentum. While the Eagles were missing two of their top receivers, the Bucks did not allow Hurts and Saquon Barkley to solely beat them with their legs. And looking more at the total numbers, David and Whitehead led the team in tackles with five, KJ Britt had four, and the defense had six sacks as a whole. Here's what some of the defensive guys had to say about the performance in their post-game interviews. I mean, just the main thing we had to focus on was us, you know, get our stuff together, focus on what we got to get right defensively, and then let everything take care of itself. We start running about other things, like what people are doing and stuff, like worry about what the offense is doing and stuff like that. You kind of lose track of what your job is, things like that. So uh, what we did was just settle in and figure out, like, what we got to do to fix ourselves, and we was able to do that for the most part today besides that big run, which is very disappointing. But uh, for the most part, I feel like we did what we were supposed to do, and uh, – Made big plays when they counted. Looking ahead to Thursday against the Falcons, this is not a pushover team anymore. And this will be a big game for the NFC South race. They have a much more competent offense, and honestly, their kicker in Young Way Koo might be their biggest weapon, as he won them the game with a last second near 60 yard field goal against the Saints. The Bucks are gonna have to bring that same intensity from the jump that they did against the Eagles. And if they do, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't win this game. That's really all I have for this one. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point. And if you enjoyed and haven't yet, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world. And also, let me know what you would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.